Today I thought we'd work on some drinking horns, or a drinking horn, but show you some others. Here's a, well, here's one that I made for my wife. This is a, what a drinking horn ought to look like. Good size, fill it up, drink on it for a while. This one is the one I'm going to work on. It's going to be really pretty because it's got all this marbling of different, you know, caramel colors and, and some black. And I'll still be able to play around down here and do something fancy and fun with the tip. And this is a fairly dense tip. I won't have a problem carving it, worrying about coming through into the cavity of the horn. I mean, we don't want no leaky cup. So a piece of wire is a great thing because you can run it down in there as far as you can until you know you've come to an end and then mark it. Place it next to it and the tip of that cavity ends right here and it all tapers down to a point so the, the walls of the horn down in here are going to be you know three-eighths of an inch thick right down to solid so that'll be fun to play with. One of the first things to do is most horns when you get them the bottom part of the horn <clears throat> will have a lot of scaly material on it and that's a combination of the hair because horn is basically hair that's just laminated itself together and, and in here you can see the lines going up through it and stuff so it's just like a transformation from the hair into horn plus you get some skin overlay and stuff like that so it's always scaly down there you want to get that off of there so that's the first thing to do nice sharp knife and gently not to cut too deeply at first you don't want to muff it up right off the bat carve this down it doesn't take a lot your knife is sharp scrape it now with the blade like this which helps to planish it down a little bit closer but sometimes in doing that the blade chatters and you start getting like a washboard effect on it that's not desirable as washboard grooves tend to go fairly deep i was in alaska and was turned on to a trick a guy told me it was an ancient Inuit trick. You take a magazine, and you roll it up really, really tight like that, and then I wrap this with a with a uh, kind of canvas cover that you can just take duct tape or tape, tape, any kind of tape, masking tape, and tape the magazine tight. Then you take a sheet of sandpaper. This is 150. For this sort of work, I consider it fairly aggressive. Nothing like 80 grit or anything like that, but for horn, it's pretty aggressive. Anyway, so I use that, and that flattens the horn down nicely, smooths it all out with the carving marks off of it. I've gone over it pretty good with the 150 over the whole thing. And there's always going to be blemishes that don't show up until you're on the finer paper and you have to go back and readdress it. But I think I'm good enough to move to the next grade. So this is 150. Now I'm going to go down to 220. That'll be as far as I sand it. After that, a uh, horn is soft enough that a, a fairly coarse steel wool will finish it off nicely. And then a fine steel wool and polish. But all of that happens later after the carving. What's nice about the magazine is, as opposed to say a uh, wooden block, is it's soft and it doesn't leave any corners or marks. It's, it conforms to shapes better and you get a nice smooth surface with no flats. I've done the 220 on the magazine roll and now I'm sanding by hand and when you do this, then you go with the grain. Because with the magazine, you're cutting against, across the grain. Usually stop at 220, but the piece I happen to pick up here for this is 400 grit sandpaper, which is doing a fine, fine job. Be less work for the steel wool. So this is just about where I'm gonna stop sanding for now. We'll sand it some more later, I'm sure. And there is a definite uh, fragrance coming off of this. Yeah, not this probably form. favorite. <laughs> it's not. It's not bad. I mean, it kind of smells like livestock, sort of. Yeah. No, it smells like hair. Yeah. All right. So I've got it cleaned up 
pretty well if we hold it up to a light. Get pretty. Yeah. And now you can see the the edge is really thin and, and quite soft, you know. It's too thin for a real working edge to drink out of. So I'm going to mark it, cut that part off. I cut this horn because it's so fibrous. I use the finest blade that I have that will hold up. And this is a, a really nice little hacksaw blade that you can get at the hardware store. It's six inches long, give or take. And it's got very tiny but aggressive teeth. There, and this still is a little thin, but it's better. See that? <laughs> Breath of it. Take the corners off all the way inside and out. And it feels nice and smooth. Nobody cut their lip on that. Next thing we do is, it's not going to be as dramatic a separation between like the white and the black, but there will be a bit. And I'm going to make it start right here. And I'm just going to cut a groove around. And you can, this is a good way to see how you're getting down to the dark. Hmm. But so there. I've got a groove cut all the way around. And that's a start. Then, a matter of nailing down just exactly what kind of a pattern you want to go with, I'm going to do take this square. This is a little square rasp. This one, I'm going to cut a second line. That's a second cut around. So what we're going to do is concentrate on this part. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to flatten this off kind of octagonish. I'm going to start off with pencil and uh, put down some guidelines. What I try to do here is divide it in half as best as I can guess. No scientific means here. Half. Now that I've got it quartered, I'll split the quarters in half again. I'm trying also not to scuff up this part here on either end. Ideally, what I want to end up with is another bead kind of sort of thing like this over here to separate the flats from this. See, I'm using my thumb as a bumper to keep it from going down there too far. See, now I've just started, and I think that looks so much better already. You know, just the flats. I'm getting most of it off with this great big thing and I've got a smaller um, grasp that I'm going to get on here in a minute. What's nice on this is it seems that the, the flats are going down and exposing pure black and yet leaving a fairly white band. I think we've got the flats just about as sharp as I want to get them. Now we're deciding what to do on all of that solid, meaty horn end. And I think I'm kind of stuck on the raven thing, mm. Mm. which I can probably do most of that here with a file. What I'm, I'm thinking of doing is uh, having the raven's head come down, his beak down here. I'm gonna have him holding a berry or something mm -hmm. in his beak. And that way his beak will be open back a bit. Ah. And that uh -huh. would be the place to run a cord through or right. a Netsky lanyard hanger thing. Wonder tool. <laughs> I'm gonna to have the top of the head running down. Hi, Jesse. Running down like that. So I, I put a couple of lines on there that you can't see because it's like black on black, but to me it's shine silver on black and I can just barely see it. I got a center line down here and I'm going to take the file and start roughing out the beak with the file and then eyebrows will kind of come down and meet. 
what I'm doing now is I get the beak, I get the, the kind of the eyebrow roughed out here, and now on the beak they have this like hair coming down that overlays the, the beak a little bit. So I'm going to create a place for that to happen. Grabby. The shape was 80% there. So my work on it is a collection of subtleties. <laughs> so. Okay, so I got that nose hair, if you will, kind of roughed out. That's just the foundation for it. Right down along here and here. I'm going to do the eyes next because that would be the right thing to do. They're going to go in around here. Um, and I'm going to put an eye in right there. And I'm not sure if I move it around a little bit, if the, the lead, the graphite shines. I'm going to use a little chisel. So I'm going to cut in the, the eyebrow a little bit. Does it show up? They're pretty much in the same spot, opposite sides. Yeah, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna cut in those, that nose hair stuff I was talking about. Um, let's do it in the center. I've lined out all, all what I wanted and ended up as a byproduct, all these extra hairs that I don't want. So I'm going to go lace them off. So you're actually using like a dentist's pick. Yeah, these things work really good. Find all these different ends on them. This one here has a an end like a squirrel's claw just about and I, it's good for drawing this way it cuts on the on the back stroke use it on harder materials bone and antler but this one works really nice on this horn got the little nostrils carved in has little nose hairs carved on there carved this little brow a bit and then sand it up looks like oh my god it's turning white <laughs> Don't usually go across grain, but sometimes for shaping purposes you do, and and then afterwards you brush it back down with the grain. Things all straightened out again. Do I have any little piece, a little coarser than I like, but it'll work. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the head's pretty much done there. I don't know which side looks. I guess they both look okay. So really, I mean, a person could go on and on with something like this. There's plenty of sanding left to do. All these flats need to be sanded, you know, with inlays and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But I think for the purpose of what we're doing here, this is a good place to stop. 